you have the schematic here and um, let's do the simulation let's run for example the uh, ac the, the the ac response so that is not what is active now so i will kill this transient response okay and first check before you check the noise you want to see if the bandwidth is okay otherwise you cannot have a correct interpretation of the noise so you must know that your your first your your amplifier is working so your operating point must be okay then if your operating point is okay then you can have a meaningful ac analysis then if the ac analysis is okay then you can go to noise because then you have a transfer and you have verified that the transfer is okay and if that is all okay then we did not change things in to the initial design then we are going to do the new step which is the transient analysis so first the noise basically you you could start with operating point analysis but since that is a part of ac analysis we will first do just ac analysis and run the whole thing so if i run the whole thing and i want to plot this one you see how a nice result we have so zero to b that's exactly what we were looking for and it is minus point oh eight uh, db 80 milli db and so from this you could calculate the loop gain you could say okay how large is the loop gain because the only source for this error is the loop gain because the capacitors are accurate so in the middle when there is no influence at the low frequencies of the r3 and at high frequency and the c2 and at high frequencies of the row off you should have zero error if there was an infinite loop gain so you see this is very constant here about uh, 80 milli db all this range so here probably the loop gain is the limiting factor and you can see how much i can calculate how much the loop gain is in the situation like this okay originally maybe you remember from our first uh well if you don't you can go back to the to the um to the videos um that we needed a resistor in the order of 17 or 18 or 19 ohm it was something like that so let's say between 15 and 20 ohm i can remember when the current mirror was with an ideal controlled current source so this one introduces a pole we must have a little bit stronger frequency compensation with the phantom zero and you see 38 ohm but 38 ohm is really only um, it's it's um, i don't know exactly what it is but it's less than much less than one nanovolt per square of hertz so i don't expect much influence on the noise performance of uh, through r4 and you can check it in your simulation of course but let's do the noise let's see what we have so I will comment out the AC analysis. And activate the noise analysis. And run the thing again. And then add trace and let's do the input noise because we have designed there and this is equivalent antenna e field basically because we have the divider the 0.5 gain of 0.5 meter antenna we have uh, we have also included now let's see what the level is we should have there five nanovolt per square of hertz we have 4.75 nanovolt per square of hertz and the value was allowed to be doubled at 100 kilohertz and that's what we designed for and you see the value is 9.5 so that is still okay it is completely in spec and we still have the current that was required 1.5 milliamp i didn't need to tweak much it's just you have to be careful with the design of this transistor that is important that the length is low in, uh, is long enough and of course the longer you make it and the wider you make it so if you go to very low gm and weak inversion the frequency uh, influence becomes important then the pole because you get a very low ft so it's a kind of balancing out and um, this is typically something that can be done by an optimizer of course but here it doesn't didn't cost much uh, many steps to to find the 
correct value. Now, for those who want to see the influence of 500 MEC, you, you of course, um, you can um, uh, calculate the influence. I didn't do it. I was a little bit too lazy for that. But if you make it 100 MEC, you, we expect already that the low frequency noise will increase. So that is, and the floor noise will not be affected by it. And now you see the low frequency noise is 515.5 nanovolt per square of hertz. And in the range of interest, we still have the same value, 4.75. So definitely the 100 MAC resistor is not high enough and the 500 MAC is nice in spec and you can still buy 500 MAC of course, but you cannot, probably cannot put it accurately on chip. So with 500 MAC, the noise is okay. And this is the way this thing is biased. And um, uh, it's just a requirement, the falling from the requirement, there's nothing you can do about it. With this small value of the antenna capacitance, you cannot allow, allow a low value of the resistor. And you can imagine that there are somewhere around the earth is some satellite going, having a circuit with R equals 10 kilo ohms. So I think it will be a kind of noise generator instead of a receiver, but that's for people who know about that project. Okay, let's go on and let's now verify. So we have the noise, we have the AC performance. Let's say, let's kill the noise. And let us now focus on the distortion because now we obviously we have an amplifier. Um, I didn't yet check the stability. For stability, you better do transient. So we will immediately find out if it is not stable um, because then we have, we will see the oscillations in the transient analysis. But before I want to do a, I want to do a dis, uh, distortion. The gain from here to uh, the output is unity. We needed to have 320 millivolt excursion here. So I take two sinusoidal signals of 0.16 volt amplitude. And I tune their frequency. So one to 10 megahertz and the other 12.5 megahertz. So this one has a period of 80 nanosecond, this one of 100 nanoseconds. So if I do, if I simulate 800 uh, nanoseconds, then I have 10 of 12.5 megahertz and I have, um, what did I say? Eight of 10 megahertz and they both fit. And that is very nice for the Fourier transform because then you can, make it like the fundamental interval and you won't see any uh, much of rounding errors. So let's run for the transient. And let's plot here the output. And here you see nicely how this, uh, so the endpoint here fits on the start point here. That is the idea. And it doesn't fit completely because there's this 100 nano that needs to be charged. And um, uh, so you could also wait a few periods and then do it. But if you do FFT of this one, uh, how does it work? View, uh, not a view, FFT, of the out. Then you see that we can look very, very deep at low frequencies. And that is the result of a proper selection of the frequencies. So let us look to the distortion level. This one is minus 25 dB. And this is harmonic distortion, but that was not specified. Intermodulation distortion is this, these two are intermodulation distortion and you see it is minus 92. So we have 67 dB and the specification was 50 dB. So we are well in spec. That means we have some headroom, some headroom that is very important for implementation of the bias sources because bias sources will definitely do something about uh, the, the, the quality of the transfer. Uh, we need some headroom for noise. 
we need some headroom for bandwidth. Well, bad, bandwidth we have enough, and we also need some headroom for distortion. And at this point, the conclusion could be, well, I think it is really doable to finish this amplifier.